Hey guys, this is Ray with DRP Motorsports. Welcome back to the shop again. And as promised, we're gonna make another pull on the dyno with our 2019 Mustang GT with the Odin supercharger set up. Uh, last time we ran the car, you know, we put a 2.4 inch pulley on the supercharger, trying to get as much boost out of the supercharger as possible. That yielded us with a 919 uh, rear wheel horsepower pull on the dyno. Today is a very much improved weather-wise day. Uh, we had a cold front come through last night and the temperature is much lower. The humidity is much lower. The air is much more dense. Uh, we're no longer in the mid nineties here in the shop right now, 69 degrees. Uh, the humidity is way less. Um, the density altitude the other day was hovering around 2,500 feet. And right now we are in the mid 600s so big difference cooler more denser air it's going to have more oxygen in it so it'll allow um, any kind of engine whether it's forced induction or naturally aspirated to uh, take in more oxygen burn more fuel make more power also cooler intake temps will allow us to add a little bit more time in advance which will build power as well so we tweak the tune we're going to make a pull here and see what kind of difference it makes Okay guys, you've been watching a few dyno pulls that we've made over a course of a few days here with our 2019 Mustang. Um, since we put on the 2.4 pulley, I wanted to see how the car would perform in some really good air on the dyno power-wise. And we run into a little discovery. Um, when we got some really good air, uh, that supercharger made uh, quite a bit more boost than what it made before. And we ran into some tuning issues. but. Uh, over a course of a few days and experimentation, we finally got it figured out. Um, I'll show you what we were up against. First of all, our best number on a dyno pool was actually when we had a pool where we had an issue up top. And you can see this little dip in both power and torque up top above 70, around 7,500 RPMs. Anyway, on that pull, we made 956, 814, um, and that was generally where the car peaked out at, somewhere around 950 wheel, uh, depending on the air, the time of day, so on and so forth. It, it, it varied a little bit, but we kind of struggled a little bit to get this little dip figured out, and what was going on there, guys, was the throttle blade was actually closing up some at that point during the dyno pull, and we struggled a little bit to try to figure out why, but basically, in a nutshell, when you tune these Gen 3 Coyotes for a supercharger and a supercharger that's running that much boost, there has to be some sort of agreement between two or three tables uh, in the tune for that throttle body to be happy and work as it should. So after tweaking about three different tables in the tune, and I mean, you really had to get it pinpointed down to get it um, to run right. After we got it pinpointed down, um, we finally made a clean pull and... Uh, that was just a few minutes ago, and the weather today is not as good as it was the other day when we made that 956 pool. But uh, this was the last run. Let me clear it all out so you can see it. And open it back up again. So there you go. There's a clean pool. There's no dip up top. And we made nine, uh, 947 wheel horsepower, um, 800 foot-pounds of torque on that pool, which is basically like i said where we where we've been at with all our pulls on the chassis dyno so we've got it pretty well dialed in pretty happy with the tune pretty happy with the setup um as far as you know the potential of this setup 
I will say I think we have maximized potential of this uh, supercharger engine combination. This is a bone stock Odin supercharger. It hasn't had any port work or nothing like that special done to it. it does have the big 163R uh, monoblade throttle body. It's got a, as you know, a 2.4 inch grip tech pulley on it and a 10% overdrive crank uh, pulley on it. So we're pretty much spinning it as fast as we can spin it with the parts that are available from VMP. Um, this is a fantastic supercharger. I uh, can't say anything negative about it. It really, really delivers. And the torque that this car makes as soon as you crack the throttle is unbelievable. But for power levels beyond a thousand wheel horsepower, I think, I think we're just, you know, pushing it beyond the limits. Um, as you can see a while ago, we're having around 950 wheel. Uh, I will say that this is a nine and a half to one compression illuminator crate engine. So we're down on compression a little bit compared, compared to the standard Coyote engine. So if this was a standard Coyote engine with the 12 to one compression, it probably would be over a thousand wheel horsepower. But uh, airflow wise, I think we've reached potential. And the reason I say that, I've been studying the logs and uh, I won't give you a whole lot of detail here to try to bore you, but air load, which is this figure right here, if you can see it, 2.5. 2.5 air load is where we peaked out. That's basically kind of a measurement of, you know, how much air is being drawn into the motor and being processed and turned into power. And uh, 2.5 is, is the most we got, and we got that at 6,300 RPMs. And uh, anyway, let me carry the log on out to 7,500 where you can all the way out to, well, let's do it 7,800. It's about where we lifted. Uh, air load dropped to 2.36 at that point, and it was a slow, gradual fall. Uh, I wasn't seeing any supercharger belt slip. Um, if it was belt slip, you'd see a sudden fall in it, but it was not belt slip. It was just basically this supercharger was maxing out its airflow potential around 6,300 RPMs and beyond. It was just going beyond its efficiency range. So uh, it was kind of dropping off after that. So always keep that in mind when you, uh, you know, get a, um, a build, you know, what your goals are. You need to understand how, you know, where the parts, you know, what power range a certain uh, supercharger or a turbocharger will work at. So that, you, you know, when you get it all installed, you know the limits and potential of what you got. Uh, I'd love to see the 1,000 wheel horsepower. I'm not going to lie. but And I might could have if we got a perfect day, really cold air, really push time into the limit. But I'm not trying to blow this uh, engine up. It's a good engine, and I want to do other things with it. So we're going to call it done it there uh, with this combination. So stay tuned. We might do something different in the future. I'm kind of contemplating maybe going with a... Uh, turbo setup on this car in the future and just seeing you know what kind of power we can get with a, with a uh, twin turbo setup but we'll see anyways guys thank you for following along god bless each and every one of you and we'll see you again soon